Hello everyone, my name is Sarah. This is the Campfire Crew. If you like and subscribe, you can become one of my lovely little embers. I am a agender, non-binary, they, them, um, and I've been trying out some content on my channel again for the first time since I was like 20. So it's been a while, but last year I dipped my toes back in um, to making videos and this year I'm going all out. So I'm doing Pan Those Eyeshadows, which is an eyeshadow project, but I'm also going to be talking about the books that I've been reading every few months, the albums I've been listening to and like my favorite songs that I've been listening to. I'm going to be talking about the games that I've been playing and buying and what I've gotten a lot of hours into. And of course, I'm going to be talking about the books I've been reading. So to start the year off, I figured I would talk about all the books that I have read last year since it is already 2023. But if you enjoy any of those things, you want to see any of the things that I do, uh, you can subscribe to become an ember. I'm really good at intros. I think I nailed that one. <laughs> anyway, let me actually get into it. So I don't read a lot of books. Um, every year I, I track my usage on Storygraph and every year they have a book reading challenge and every year without fail, I always go, let me read 12 books. And I never do, but I always, always put my goal to 12 and one day I will accomplish it. That was not this year. However, I did read a lot of new books this year. I think I actually didn't read a single book that I've read before. So it's all new stuff to me. In the past, I've read a lot of um, books over and over again. Every couple of years, I tend to reread books. But this year, all new books, which I'm very excited about. So yeah, let, let me stop rambling and actually tell you about the books that I've read. I'm so excited. I'm, I've already tried to film this intro like six times. Anyway, so the first book I read this year is Iron Widow. Iron Widow is by... I just looked this up. Give me a second. Shiran Zhe Zhao. I'm so mispronouncing that. I've, I looked it up. I tried. Okay. Anyway, this is by a YouTuber and I really love their channel. And when I saw they were writing a book, I thought it was a really good opportunity to get back into reading because I used to be so into YA. And then once I got old enough where it wasn't appealing anymore. I just kind of stopped reading and I thought this would be a great um, introduction back into reading and it was. So you've probably seen this book all over. It was released, I believe in 2021. Um, yeah, right when it released, I got it, um, but I actually got it delivered in December of 2021. Um, so I started reading it December 28th of 2021 and I finished it at the, of course, in 2022 on January 5th. So I counted it towards my January numbers. Um, I really enjoyed this book. I know a lot of people didn't, I'm going to stop holding this up now. <laughs> I know a lot of people didn't really like the book. Um, but I really actually enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it. I am the kind of person where there's a few things that are important to me in terms of books and I'm not a reviewer by any means. I will never claim to be. I just like what I like. Um, but characters, interesting character dynamics, um, and a world that I can get sucked into and is believable to me are the main things I look for. Plot holes I don't give a shit about. Like as long as the characters are interesting the character dynamics are interesting and it's a world I can actually get sucked into. Those are the things that are most important to me. So I really loved this book because the world is so interesting. Um, it's a mix between Chinese ar arist aristocracy. I know how to say words. It's like a Chinese aristocracy drama mixed with mech battles and it's just so interesting. Um, I love all of the aspects of obviously female empowerment but also the way in which this book talks about how historically women were pitted against each other and so you know woman power wasn't as much of a thing because those were also people who could harm you. 
Um, I thought it was just such a good book. I really liked it. I know not everybody loved it, but I really enjoyed it. It was a great way to get back into reading. And I'm actually really excited to read this again because I can't remember much about it. So I'm really excited also. No, not going to spoil, but I really like the way the romance plot works out. Let's just say I'm really excited about the way the romance plot works out because it's so good. It makes me happy that it doesn't just love triangle into annoying hell. And I love it. Yeah, I really enjoyed this book. So the next book I read is Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. Honey Girl was so good. I'm going to say that about all these books because if I read a book and I don't like it, I just stop reading it. I don't make myself finish books. I, I've tried to do that. I can't. I literally will just forget about it and never read again. Like I will just give up reading for years if I make myself do that. So all the books that I have, I liked at least enough to read. So that tells you something. So Honey Girl, I started March 14th, 2022, and then I finished on April 6th, 2022. It is a book about Mor not Morgan, sorry, about Grace Porter, who is a PhD astronomer student who goes to Vegas who goes to Vegas as um, a treat for graduating and ends up marrying, Vegas marrying a girl. What is her name? Let me find out. Ba, 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 ba. I guess it doesn't matter. Who marries a girl and then those two end up trying to make it work out. And it is so good. It touches on, I'm going to put it down again. It touches on subjects of family expectation of it touches a little bit on race and sexuality um, but mostly it touches on family expectation and what it means to succeed so it talks about things like how do you know that you've succeeded what is important to you it's a very coming of age story but it's it's um a very queer narrative of course the main character is into women and is presumably a woman um and the story feels very queer in that it is about it's a coming of age story but it's a much older coming of age story so it's not about like teenagers or 20 year olds it's about a phd student so probably someone my age um coming to terms with the transition from college into the real world and changing their expectations about what success means and about friendship and family and making sacrifices and being emotionally mature and taking risks and when those risks are good and when they're bad and how to deal with people. So it feels very queer, very lovely. I love a late coming of age story because as a queer person, it hits on that kind of way that some queer people come to terms with themselves much later in life and so they come into the like second puberty of like trans people and that kind of like realizing who you are later in life and i love that it's it's basically why a for older adults or like 25 26 year olds and i really loved it it was beautifully beautifully written and i really really recommend this one it's so good so the next book I started was Of Women and Salt by Gabriela oh, Garcia, by Gabriela Garcia. This is a book that I picked up and knew nothing about, but I had seen the title of it. Actually, the same thing with um, Honey Girl. I had seen people talk about it and I knew nothing about it except that it was gay. And I was like, good enough for me. But this one I knew literally nothing about. I had just seen the cover around and I was like, eh, I'll pick it up. Um, so I started it on May 4th and then I finished it. Oh my God, this one took me a while. July 18th. So this book focuses on the main character, Janet, and it goes through her life chronologically. But then it also does cuts to the past and it goes from the most recent to the most distant past 
And as you learn about Jeanette's family and her past, you uncover stories about why the family is set up the way it is, why the dynamics are the way they are. You learn about their secrets and it's just a really interesting read. Janet is a drug addict in this and it talks about her descent into um, addiction. It touches on family trauma, which is something I love because I have lots of family trauma. Intergenerational trauma stories. Uh, <laughs> Look, it talks about intergenerational trauma and the way that our family history can impact us years and years later. It talks about secrecy and it's just a really interesting book. It was really good. It switches basically every chapter um, the, the way that it's told. So it goes from Jeanette to the past to Jeanette to the past to her mom to the past. Um, so I found that for me, this book was something I read very slowly because I'd read one chapter at a time. Usually I bulk read a bunch of chapters, but for this, because of the switchy narratives, I found it much easier to read one chapter at a time, which actually was kind of nice. It felt like a TV show, like back in the day before Netflix, when you had to actually watch it one week at a time. I sound so fucking old saying that. I'm so sorry. But yeah, it feels like that, which is nice because I didn't really get a lot of that before I became an adult. But it was, it was a really good read. I really enjoyed it. Like I said, I enjoyed all of these things. <laughs> Speaking of intergenerational trauma, the books are all falling on me. Speaking of intergenerational trauma, the next book I started July 24th, and that is The Island Child by Molly Atkin. So The Island Child is something that hits very close to home for me. It is about a woman who lives in Canada. I mean, I'm not a woman, but I do live in Canada, who has moved from Ireland, um, a very, very small Irish town on an island. And it also has two stories. So this one goes from between the main character what is her name? It's been so long since I've read this. I can't remember. I should have maybe written notes about this. But you know, I can't remember her name. I can't find it. Anyway, it tells the story about this woman who moves from Ireland to Canada. And it starts off with her talking about how her daughter has run away from Canada and she's trying to find her daughter. And so it goes chronologically from the start to her finding or trying to find her daughter and then it goes to a flashback and then goes from her youngest memories to her finally leaving um Ireland and all the things that happen after till it basically meets up in the middle so it starts start to end and then end to start and then bang it meets in the middle after you learn about why um she left Ireland in the first place so it's also about family trauma but this time it's about Irish family trauma which is closer to my heart since my family is Irish at least on my mom's side we're Irish and we have a lot of family trauma so I read this it was very interesting I also kind of read it slowly but I found it less confusing of a read than a women in salt I'd say these two books, if you like one, you're probably going to like the other. Um, but Of Women and Salt goes back and forth and I find it a little harder to digest. Whereas this, I find the storylines because it's going chronologically start to finish in both ends as opposed to Of Women and Salt, which goes chronologically one way and then chronologically from latest to earliest that way. So one like meets in the middle and one goes that way it's I just find of women insult a little more confusing took me longer to read whereas this I could read multiple chapters and I believe if I'm not mistaken um the island child didn't go back and forth quite as often if if I'm 
remembering rightly, this doesn't go back and forth every chapter, or if so, the chapters are longer, but I just found it much easier to read multiple chapters at a time. Not saying it's better, but that's just how I found it. It's also a longer book. I maybe should talk about how long each of these books are, but hmm, I forgot. So I don't know if I said this already, but I started it July 24th and then I finished this book September 13th, 2022. But again, I really enjoyed this book. It hit close to home, so it was a bit of a slower read because it reminded me of my family trauma. Same with Of Women and Salt. Again, these books had very similar themes and reading them back to back coincidence because I did not pick these out knowing that they were books about family trauma. I just kind of saw the covers, was like, okay, and then read them and back to back family trauma. And I was like, wow, this reminds me of my family trauma. We talk about family trauma a lot in my family. My mom is very big, luckily, into um, working through family trauma. So I do appreciate, mom, I know you're not watching this, but if you do, thanks for working through your family trauma so I have less family trauma. The intergenerational trauma in my family is slowly going down. Anyway, <laughs> we're all getting more sane by the generation. Anyway, this really reminded me of my family. It gave me big feels and I really enjoyed it. It was weird. It was weird. It's so different than kind of what I'm used to. It felt like a culture shock. Um, like the parts where it's in Ireland in the past felt like a bit of a culture shock, um, but also relatable. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one too. Like I said, I enjoyed all the books I read or I wouldn't have read them. I wouldn't have finished them. So the next book I read, I have these in the wrong order. I read in a single night. And that is The King's Nun by Catherine Monroe. So I read this on September 28th, 2022. So yeah, I finished, I finished The Island Child and then like a week, two weeks later, I picked up this book and read it in a single night, um, which was not a good idea, by the way. Not a good idea, but I did do it. And then I didn't sleep all night because I was busy reading this. So this is the story about a nun. That's it. It's a story about a nun that uh, one of the kings it takes a fancy to. Not a king. What is his name? Very famous. Oh, Charlemagne. It's about King Charlemagne being all horny for this nun. And this nun is like, Meh, but I just want to, I want to run the nun. I just want to run this place. Um, I love historical fiction. This was great. It was a great little romance. Um, it had a very charismatic lead. It had lots of tragedy, lots of tragedy, depressing book, but good. And I really enjoyed it. Yeah, that's all I have to say about this one. I don't have a lot to say. I read it at night. Um, this one didn't make me think as much as some of the others. It was more of a, um, it was just a fun thing to read. It was just a fun thing to read. I don't really remember it that well, but it was fun to read. Um, it was really interesting, actually. I don't know how historically accurate it is. I don't look these things up, but it was a good read and I would definitely read it again. Like I said, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't have read it and I certainly wouldn't have read it in a night. But it was definitely more salacious than the last two books we talked about. It was something I just picked up, read all the way through, and then I really kind of forgot about until now. Um, but honestly, that's kind of good sometimes because it means I can reread it sooner than the other ones because I don't remember it as well. But yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. And then, and then, also on September 28th, I read a lot. September 28th. I just, I was just reading books. I read two books and these, oh, they're so heavy, are the Laura Olympus comic books. If you know about Laura Olympus, then you'll know that they're, the, the webtoon is a little bit controversial. And look, I get it. I get the controversy. 
Ow. This is really for the people who know and everyone else is gonna be so confused. I get the controversy, but also it's good. It's just good, okay. You can like things and be critical of them at the same time and that's this with me because that was a bad panel. Look at this, it's so beautiful. So, oh, if you're gonna buy these, you've probably read the web comics. So I'm not gonna talk too much about them, but Lore Olympus is a web comic and it's about Persephone and Hades falling in love. It's a reimagining, it's a modern reimagining of the Hades, Persephone, Persephone, I'm sorry, the Hades and Persephone um, romance. It turns it much more into a romance than a kidnapping, first of all, so we love that. And also, it's, it's very interesting because it sets the Greek pantheon in a modern civilization, but it also has every time they go into the mortal realm, the mortal realm is still ancient Greece. So it's a very interesting mix of those two things. But yeah, it, it it's good. The art style is really good. Um, I'd say the first book is, let me give a prime example. It's a lot less how do I say this? It's clear that it was a webcomic and translated for a real comic because I find in the first book they have a lot of trouble with the paneling. I find that a lot of the pages are not enough. Okay, like take this for instance. It's so much blank space. They don't really play with their space very well in the first um, edition. I find it maybe a tad lazy. I don't know if lazy is what I'd say, but it definitely feels not as, like you can tell it it wasn't originally made for a comic book. Whereas the second one, I feel like they really started to play with their comic book structure. There's a lot less dead space. They use their space a lot better. And then there's areas where they kind of play with the comic book structure so they overlap things in areas they don't go quite as clean cut um they just do a lot more layering they use the whole page and it is a lot easier to read and more enjoyable as a comic book so I feel like if the second one was like the first one I'd be a little pissed off I'd be like wow so they don't care but because the second one is so much better laid out it does feel like they just didn't know what they were doing in the first one. They were just trying it out. And in the second one, they really perfected it and really made it feel like its own original comic book. So I definitely would buy the third one if I ever see it. Um, but yeah, these are just my Laura Olympics books. I read them both on September 28th. Same with the last book. Um, the, the art is so beautiful. But yeah, I'd recommend if you wanted to look at it. And also all the gods have their own colors. Oh, it's so beautiful. The illustrations, gorgeous. If you wanted to read it, read it on Webtoons. And if you really love it, you can buy it in a physical copy. I just really wanted to have the physical copy. I just really wanted to have the physical copy. Um, but yeah, you can just read it for free on Webtoons. And the last book I have, I don't actually have in physical copy. I don't know where it is. But I started reading October 25th, so about a month after. Um, yeah, and it's called The Woman in the White Kimono. I will put a picture here. So The Woman in the White Kimono is a story about a woman from Japan and a man from America who comes on his Navy ship and they get married. Um, and the story about how they separate. So it's actually told from the story of his daughter, who is not from this woman, figuring out what the fuck happened. So it tells, it's again a story where it tells two different stories at the same time. It tells the story of the daughter who gets the letter 
when the dad dies and it's a investigative journalist so she's trying to figure out what happened who this woman is where this letter came came from does she have a second family does she have siblings like what is going on because her dad died and left her this weird letter that was like I love you so much my wife I'm, I'm sorry I left you this way and she's like huh so she goes to Japan and tries to figure out the mysteries and at the same time you're learning the story of the woman in the white kimono it starts from the beginning and goes to the end and then meets with yeah it, but it has that joint structure again that we saw in um of sea and salt and the island child i don't know how i managed to read three books with this structure narrative i guess it's a pretty popular one but i i enjoyed reading this it was a good read but it's probably not my favorite i actually got it from my aunt um yeah i got it from my aunt at thanksgiving and i finally read it at in november and i enjoyed it i don't know if i'd read it again it was an interesting read um, but it wasn't my favorite on the list. And yeah, that's what I read this year. I hope this was somewhat entertaining for you. I've never done this before. Let me know if you liked it by liking the video, commenting. Let me know if you've read any of these because I really want to know what y'all think of them. Um, and then before I go, I guess I'll tell you favorite to least favorite. Maybe we'll just do a casual little favorite to least favorite. Keep in mind that some of these I read like a year ago and don't remember that well. Um, I'm also going to leave Laura Olympus out of it because I've already read it and I know what happens in the story. So I feel like that's going to change my perspective on it because I, I know what happens next. Like I know what happens in like 10 volumes from now. So I'm just, I'm going to keep those out. But of these five plus the woman in the white kimono, I would say... My favorite was Honey Girl. It just, it's so good. It's so good and it's right up my alley. It's all the things that I love. It's just really fucking good. And it's something I really need right now. It just really hits the spot. You know, when you find a book that's just like perfect for where you are in life, it's just right up your alley. This, this was that for me, loved this. Um, the next I'd say was either the Island Child or Women and Salt. And it's kind of hard to decide because I read this one first. I think I like The Island Child better, mostly because it, as an Irish Canadian, and it's a book about Irish Canadians and Irish people, it just really got me right in the feels because it was very relatable to me and it made me think about my family. And so it just like, it stuck with me more but I think after that it's Women and Salt which is also a really good book just incredibly well written really interesting just really good and then I'd say Iron Widow I really liked Iron Widow don't get me wrong it's just I read really good books this year I love pretty much all of these I would give like five stars I don't know I don't rate things but really good book. I really enjoyed it, but it didn't quite stick with me the way the others did. Um, it was really enjoyable. I'd definitely read it again. I'd read all of those again. Um, but it just compared to these three, it just didn't quite, it wasn't quite as impactful though. If a sequel to this comes out, you know, I'm reading it. So excited. And I definitely would read, um, from this author again. And then I'd probably say, <sighs> The Woman in the White Kimono. Um, I thought it was really well written. It was a really interesting premise. And I've really been liking that back and forth storytelling. It was very intriguing and it kept me on my toes. I wanted to know what happened at all moments and it was just so entertaining. And then um, The King's Nun, is probably my last. I don't dislike this book by any means. I thought it was really good, but it just wasn't impactful in the way that the rest of them were. So that is what I read this year. Tell me what you read this year. Tell me if you've read any of these books this year, last year, whenever, and let me know your thoughts. Um, 
yeah, I'll see you if you just are interested in the book stuff. I will see you in a couple months when I go over what books I've read then. Bye now. Bye. Bye-bye.